everyone. Today the guest of Aharaz is the first councillor of European Union's delegation to Azerbaijan, Mr. Denis Stalilis. So I don't want to waste your time, I'll directly pass the questions. How do the discussions continue within the framework of Eastern partnership between European Union and Azerbaijan? This is uh, a process that uh, has started with uh, negotiations for a new framework agreement between the European Union and Azerbaijan. I think uh, already realized a very big progress in some areas. There are some other areas that need further work, but we are hopeful that the negotiations will be concluded very soon. Donald Tusk expressed his support about the Azerbaijan severity, independence and territorial integrity during his visit to Baku. Uh, what projects does the European Union plan to implement in order to activate the peace process between Armenia and Azerbaijan? European Union has expressed in many occasions its support to the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan and uh, its belief that any conflict should be solved you know, within uh, a peaceful uh, framework and uh, in this sense we support the OSCE co-chairs um, within the framework of the Minsk group who uh, are trying to find uh, and to mediate. Um, obviously the European Union has uh, any interest to have uh, uh, stability in the region, therefore it has uh, uh, already uh, supported me measures to bring the two people uh, of Azerbaijan and Armenia closer together and uh, to prepare for peace. Of course, this is also a very long process that will um, depend also on the political side of negotiations. Uh, but we stand ready to support this further if needed. The third Imagine Euro Tolerance Festival, which was organized by, by the European Union, was very spectacular and welcomed in Azerbaijan with great interest. Are such events aimed to introduce values of inter intercultural dialogue, diversity and tolerance to more intense level? Yes, we are very happy to have uh, already the third edition of uh, Imagine Euro Tolerance Festival in May uh, 2019. It was Yes, big success, I think, because we brought uh, together a very impressive, I think, group of artists, of film directors, of um, uh, performers, uh, musicians from different parts of uh, the world, not only Europe, but other parts of, as well. And we brought the festival also in Genja. In Genja, the possibilities uh, of uh, having uh, international festivals are far more limited than in Baku. Um, we had um, a very high level conference on the Eastern Partnership. It was a very um, impressive festival. We had uh, more than 4,500, 5,000 people attending different events, which I think is, is a big uh, uh, success and much more than last year. They bring uh, some kind of value and some kind of political message. The next one will be in September, where we'll have the first ever festival dedicated to you, women, so women festival. We will call it Gözgalasi because there was a previous initiative exactly 10 years ago with this name, uh, but not only to be attended uh, by women, hopefully by men as well, because we learn a lot about women creativity and this is very important for us. Then we will have uh, our uh, uh, typical Fantasia festival, so the, the second edition of the festival dedicated to cultural and architectural heritage. This will be in November, 1st to 10th of November in Baku and in Genja. Then we will have photos, photo exhibitions, we will have lots of films, film directors coming, workshops, music, we will have many, many surprises. I'm not uh, allowed to tell you everything, but uh, I'm sure that you will love because it will be a mix of very uh, interesting and exciting events. Between them we will have two festivals, film festival, the classical European film festival with feature films um, that will be, that will start on the 2nd of October. So as you can see we'll have many events ahead. Yeah, sounds interesting. 
Um, as you mentioned, uh, there were a lot of tourists in Azerbaijan, I mean, like, there were of people from coming all around the world for the festivals, like artists, I don't know, like musicians. What was their impression about Azerbaijan, about the capital? I usually say to these people who come and attend these uh, events for the first time, I tell them, you know what, you come here, but um, I'm confident that it will not be the first time that you come here. Because people who come here, they always return. So, um, for instance, in this uh, festival that we will have uh, in November, we will have uh, one film director who has been uh, here for Imagine, and he wa wanted to come back, and he was ready to come even free of charge, uh, even pay his ticket for that, because he just wanted to be here. Yeah. There is another film director who comes for the fourth time, fourth time, so he is absolutely in love with Baku. Uh, one of the things that we try to have in the festivals is not just a, a performance and that's it, but we try that these people interact with local people, with their colleagues. They create links and it's really interactive and it's not just one event, that they create these links between people, between artists, um, that will stay. Tolerance in Azerbaijan is based on ancient historical roots. As a frequent visitor to the regions of Azerbaijan, what are your impressions about this topic? I think it's definitely, I mean, the, the history, of course, of Baku is a testimony of the different uh, groups, ethnic groups, different religions. Obviously now the Baku is much more homogeneous um, as a, a population, but I think the Azerbaijani per se is normally a very uh, tolerant uh, tourists who come and visit uh, uh, Baku, and, and, but not only Baku, especially the countryside, they feel that uh, uh, the, uh, the people are very hospitable, very warm, very welcoming. Some months ago, I was invited to Georgia, Tbilisi, to the meeting of uh, experts from Azerbaijan and Armenia. It was a meeting which, uh, was, like, which was planning to find a solution about like how to prepare the peace between the nations. Mm -hmm. And and I think it was like probably I'm not sure right now, but I think it was any project of United um, European Unions. So, uh, does European Union plan any project to prepare Azerbaijan and Armenian nations to the pace in Baku? It's not only now, we have, uh, I think, already many, many years, uh, projects that uh, try to do that. And as I said, this is a long process. I mean, this is a process that involves lots of courage, lots of uh, difficult choices to make. Um, it's a process that obviously not everybody would support uh, and we understand that, we have no illusions about that. Um, but I think it's, it's worth uh, the effort. Sometimes we want it or not, we have the neighbors and the neighbors are what they are. We cannot choose the neighbors, I'm afraid. Many other countries have been in the same position with difficult neighbors. And the first thing probably is, yes, to know one another better the strong points, the weak points, um, uh, and uh, obviously, as I said, this is a very long process that requires um, lots of courage, and uh, there are some times when you have the impression that you do, you do two steps ahead and then probably one or two or three uh, uh, behind, so you never know. Uh, this is a difficult process, but uh, the European Union believes in this process because the European Union, as I always say, is a peace project. This is uh, why we are here. We, of course, deal now with a lot more things than at the beginning. But at the beginning, at the origin, the European Union was only about peace, bringing different nations that were at war and conflict together. And this we have achieved, so I'm sure that we can help also others to do that.